Good morning. Good morning. My name is Michelle Ho. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Sino Chen Isaac. Can I check your identification? Of course. That's fine, thank you. Thank you. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some more questions about yourself, okay? okay. Can you describe the area where you live to me? Well, I live in Hong Kong, uh, to be specific, in Chun Wan, which is a residential district with a little uh, commercial uh, elements in it, and it is quite a nice community to live in. What jobs do people in your town do? Well, mostly um, people in my town um, are teachers, uh, lawyers, and doctors. How has your town or city changed over the last 20 years? Well, to say that my, my town has developed, redeveloped a lot and, and many old buildings were torn down and I was kind of sad about it because uh, I lived in my district like for my entire life. And, but there are some great features about the new buildings like the new malls and, and new shops and new places to hang with my friends. So, there is benefits and uh, there are benefits and some disav uh, disadvantages. Yeah. Do you think it is better to live in the center of town or outside in the country? Well, I believe that living inside the town is much better than living in the countryside because uh, it gets more convenient to travel to different places around the city, and uh, living in countryside uh, often have some undesirable pests, so I don't like pests so much, so I like to prefer staying in the city. Now, let's go on to reading. Do you enjoy reading? Well, I enjoy reading, and I read a lot of books, especially those, uh, uh, those fictions, uh, because I find that when I'm reading, I can immense myself into a different world, and I can really dump away all those troubles in my real life. What sort of things do you like to read? Well, uh, I like reading fictions as it uh, provides you with a completely new world, especially those science fiction, uh, uh, science fiction novels, um, um, which gives you a chance to, like, to flow through the space and to explore the universe and something like that. Tell me something about your favorite book. Well, my favorite book is actually not a science fiction novel. It is a kind of a political novel. Uh, it is the 1984 by George Orwell, and and it is quite shocking. After I read it uh, about how a regime can uh, monitor the people. And what's more shocking is that many governments, even the, those governments who claim to be free, uh, also uses such method to control the people. So that um, the horror it depicts in the novel is kind, is kind of reflected in the real society nowadays. So it really influences me the most. Yeah. What are the advantages of reading instead of watching television? or going to the cinema? Well, I think the major advantage over, uh, of books over movie and TV shows is that it gives you the um, space to imagine uh, as the TV, both TV and films would limit your imagination by showing the images uh, the director wants you to see. But when a writer creates a world and with his, wor his or her words, you can imagine according to his or her words and also adding to your own personal experience. So I think this is the magnific magnificent um, point of reading books. Now, let's talk about transport. How did you come here today? Well, I, come here, I came here today by MTR. What is public transport like in your town? Uh, well, the major public transport in my country is uh, the railway, the underground railway, and also buses. And they are quite convenient, unlike most countries. 
um, because um, Hong Kong is a small city, and but the traffic demand is high, so they often have um, a tight schedule. Um, so it won't take long for people to wait for the transportation. Okay, now I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about this for one to two minutes. You will have one minute to prepare. Do you understand? Yes. Here is a pencil and paper for writing notes. And here is your topic. Please do not write anything on the topic paper. I'd like you to talk about an exciting experience. All right, remember you have one to two minutes for this. So don't worry if I stop you. I will tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? So I would say the most um, exciting experience in my life was uh, last summer when I had my graduation trip in Taiwan. And uh, what happened exactly is that I um, rent a bike in the city in Taiwan from their hotel and I was planning to, um, to watch the sunset in the, uh, in the coastline and after I, I, I left, when I left the park it was already um, and it was already night so everything was dark and as I was riding a bike so I have to um, use the uh, road with heavy traffic, uh, and there are a lot of motorbikes in Taiwan. So I accidentally crashed into one of uh, the motorbikes, and I got slightly injured. And but then uh, I was um, received. I was uh, received by a um, house owner nearby, and he invited me into his house, and uh, he treated me well. And but when I want to get back to the hotel, I found out that I forgot my way and I even forgot the name of the hotel. So I don't know what to do. I was desperate by then. But uh, the house owner was great enough to uh, ask around to, tell, uh, to um, call each hotel and to find out whether my friend is in the hotel or not. And by some miracle, he found where my hotel is, and he personally drive me, uh, dro drove me back to the hotel. Thank you. Would you like to do this again? Well, I don't think I would like to crash my bike again, especially it's not mine. I rent it. And uh, but if any th bad things ever happen again, I was I would be happy to um, be um, to be received by such hus hospitable person. And that was quite an exciting and unforgetting uh, experience. Thank you. Can I take the paper and pencil back, please? Thank you. We've been talking about an exciting experience in your life. Now I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions relating to this topic. First, let's consider taking risks. What risks should people try to avoid? Well, I think that um, those risks which would endanger a life should be avoided, like um, the new sports currently, the parkour, which um, some may play um, normally in parks using um, park benches or wall or short walls to play parkour, but some people may be too dangerous and they play on the rooftops and they took selfies on the rooftop, which is quite a dangerous thing, considering that not only you will fall off the building and die, um, you could also injure someone who is walking below on the streets. So taking, um, it is important for you to consider your own safety as well as others' safety in carrying dangerous actions. So do you think the government should set up some legislations to prevent people from taking such risks? Well, I think that is quite hard for the government to set up a, leg to set up a legislation to forbid people from 
committing dangerous acts, because um, every everyone has their right to do whatever they want as long as it is not um, doing harms to others. But they can do things to harm themselves, and they can say this this is their human right, and you can't violate it. Do you think people take fewer risks as they grow older? Well. I believe that is that is right because as a person gets older, he or she knows more about the world, and maybe they have a lot more attachment, like to attach to their、um, partners, to their families, to their children, and they have too much responsibility in their hand. They can't take risks no more, so they will tend to be more conservative when they get older. Now. Let's move on to adventure. How important is it to have adventures in our lives? Well, having an adventure in our lives is so important because it not only is,、um, get you out of your comfort zone, you get to you get to know yourself,、um, you get to discover yourself in a different aspect from what you have already、um, emp- empowered, and you got to. Uh, explore your potentials to to a certain extent that you may actually acquire new skills, and also mo- the most important thing about having adventure is to be exciting about your life instead of like working like a robot every day and be really a human. Do you think people in your country are adventurous? Well, I'll say the people in my country are not quite adventurous. They tend to be more conservative and careful about their moves because they, what they really, what they really hope for is a, a house, a car, a family. That's all they want. They don't want any surprises, and、uh, even the word surprise is sometimes negative in Chinese. So I would say they don't like adventures. What do people learn about themselves from having adventures? Well, personally,、um, I learn from what I learn from adventures that I find out that I have certain skills. Like when I got lost in Taiwan, I find out that my、um, some people do not trust other people easily. But when the, the house owner received me, I was I have a complete faith in him. So I. Find out that I can be confident with someone I don't know. I can be confident with、uh, total strangers. So this is my kind of power in have, after having adventures. Thank you. That's the end of the speaking test.